It doesn't get much better than double chocolate sourdough bread. And lucky for you, I'm willing to share. I'm Melissa from melissaknorris.com and the Pioneering Today podcast. And I can't wait to share with you some fabulous sourdough recipes that you can use for your sourdough discard or just to create a delicious treat for your family. One of the great things about this recipe is you can pretty much make it anytime you want because it doesn't matter if the starter is in an active state or has just been fed or not. So I fed my sourdough starter last night because I knew I needed to have enough of this to make the recipe. So we're gonna start with one cup of sourdough starter. In this day and age, so many people don't know how to cook from scratch, let alone use a sourdough starter. But I'm telling you, a sourdough starter offers so many wonderful flavors to your baked goods. And then we're gonna add three quarters cup flour to the one cup of sourdough starter. Now I'm using fresh ground flour, but you can do this with regular all-purpose or just store-bought flour. My starter has been fed with a mixture of hard white wheat and a little bit of all-purpose, but for the majority of this recipe, when I'm doing things that are baked goods like this, which is a quick bread or muffins or cakes, I like to use the ancient grain spelt. So I'm gonna grind up three quarters cup flour of the spelt to add to the starter. While there's much to be said for convenience, there's also a lot to be said for doing it yourself and using old fashioned methods and having home milled fresh ground flour is one of them. I'm also gonna go ahead and grind some flour and feed my starter to get it built back up for more baking later. Time to add the flour to our starter. And anytime I am incorporating flour into a dough, I find that these dough whisks work really well, better than a spatula or a spoon. Now I keep my sourdough starter on the thicker side. I find that it just performs better and is healthier that way and is easier for the majority of my baking, but it's also gonna make it a little bit tougher to incorporate this much flour into it, which is why I like to use this Danish dough whisk. Now, if you don't care that this recipe has all of the flour being fully fermented, then you can just add it right now and go ahead and bake up your recipe and make the bread. But if you are using sourdough to fully ferment your grains, then you're gonna wanna mix in the starter with this flour so that all of the grains in the recipe are fully mixed together. And then you're gonna wanna let it sit in culture for at least eight hours, usually overnight, eight to 12 hours. So you can see to let this sit, it's a really thick dough with all of the flour and the starter. I like to just kind of get that all incorporated so that there's no more dry flour left. And then just cover this and let it ferment until we're ready to bake our bread. Before we mix up our dough, we wanna get our loaf pan greased and ready. So this is a standard nine by five loaf pan but it is cast iron, and I have to tell you, if you have never baked bread in cast iron, oh my friend, you are missing out. I will never go back to regular loaf pans ever again. The beauty of this, you do need to have, grease it, so I'm just using some coconut oil here and I'm gonna grease this, but the wonderful thing is every time you bake in this, it becomes more and more non-stick and better seasoned. What other type of pan can you say every time I use it, I'm actually improving it? And there is just something about cast iron. Once you get one of these and you have baked with it, I know you will agree with me. The food tastes better and the texture of your baked goods is improved and comes out better as well. Plus, I love when I'm using this cast iron loaf pan, unlike other same stainless steel or other different loaf pans I've used in the past that were made out of metal, my food does not stick to this cast iron loaf pan. I use cast iron almost predominantly in my kitchen for pretty much everything. And I find that one of the biggest reasons or biggest failures people have with cast iron is they're just simply not seasoning it, seasoning it correctly. So I'll link in the video, I've got a video on how to season cast iron skillets in Dutch ovens and it 
definitely applies to loaf pans as well. So now that we've got our loaf pan all greased and ready to go, it's time to get our dough whipped up. So here I have got this sourdough starter and flour that we mixed up earlier. So this has just been sitting and is ready to go, but I wanna to cream together my sugar, fats, and liquids before incorporating the flour and sourdough starter. Go ahead and add in the butter. And remember, there is the printable version of this recipe for you on the blog, and I'll link to that below. And sugar, I use organic raw sugar. You can use any sugar that you want in this recipe. It only uses a half a cup, but it is still a really sweet, delicious spread. And then we're gonna add in, so I've got butter, sugar, and my eggs, and we're gonna cream all of those together. I use room temperature eggs because these eggs come from the chickens and when I gather my eggs from the coop, I don't store them in the fridge. And room temperature eggs usually are better for baking and doing cakes anyways. So we're gonna cream these together. I don't know about you, but I don't think there's much more of a prettier sight than a mixing bowl and a wooden spoon. Some nice and creamed together there. Now we're gonna go ahead and add in the rest of our liquids to this. Got homemade vanilla extract. I only use homemade extract. I feel like it has so much more flavor than store-bought and it's so easy to make. I do have a tutorial and recipe on this one, so I'll link to it as well. I'm gonna do two teaspoons of vanilla extract. And then I'm gonna be adding in one cup of applesauce. I love being able to use the food that we've grown and preserved and put up on the homestead in my baked goods in year round. You can use zucchini. I've already went through all of the zucchini that we have preserved, but using pureed pumpkin or applesauce is a great way to add extra moisture to your bread and this naturally sweetens it. I don't usually add much sugar at all to my homemade applesauce. The apples are sweet enough but this adds just a little bit more sweetness to the bread and allows me to use less sugar. So I'm just gonna incorporate that. So now it's time to add in our flour and sourdough starter as well as our cocoa powder because this is a double chocolate recipe. I just wanna incorporate the cocoa powder and the starter with the liquids I don't wanna beat this or overwork it because then you can get large air pockets and the texture of your dough, the texture of your bread is not going to be as good. So I just have this to the point where it's incorporated, so we're gonna stop. And now we're gonna mix in almost all of the chocolate chips. I like to reserve a few to sprinkle on top of the loaf right at the end. So we're gonna put in the majority of these just reserving a few for the top. And when you're working with sourdough, because I'm not letting the sourdough actually be the leavening agent on a quick bread, you don't let it sit and rise. So I am gonna be adding in my baking powder and my baking soda, but because sourdough is naturally acidic and our baking soda and the baking powder to a degree are going to react to that, you put it in at the very end, not when you're actually mixing in your dry ingredients, because as soon as this hits this, it's gonna to begin to react, and I want it to be rising in the oven, not when it's just sitting in the dough being mixed and then poured into your loaf pan. So this goes in at the very end. And then we're just going to fold this together. Now, if my dough feels a little bit too thick, I have a little bit of coffee here and coffee heightens the flavor of chocolate. You don't end up tasting the coffee in the end recipe, but it's kind of the secret weapon to getting a delicious coffee flavor and chocolate baked goods. So I'm gonna add just a little bit to this dough. It's just a little bit thick right before I pour it in. This is something you need to watch when you're working with fresh ground flour versus regular store-bought flour. Fresh ground flour will absorb moisture differently than all-purpose flour. And you can get my guide to baking with fresh flour over at the blog. I'll link to it in the video description beneath this video and you can go and check that out. There we go. I don't wanna over mix that. So we've just got everything combined and now we're gonna go ahead and put it into our loaf pan.
And then I'm just gonna smooth this out evenly into our pan. And I wanna make sure I get every little last bit in there, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this spatula just to finish it off. And now our remainder chocolate chips, we're just gonna go ahead and sprinkle on top of the loaf. and into the oven it goes. So an hour later, here is our bread. Now you wanna let your quick bread cool in the pan for about 20 minutes before trying to remove it so that the structure is set and it doesn't fall out when you take it from the pan. And one of the ways to tell besides putting a toothpick in the center and pulling out that it's clean is with a cast iron pan, the bread will begin to pull away from the edges of the pan. So you kind of have two tips to know if it's ready to pull out of the oven or not. One of the best ways to keep your sourdough starter active and in good shape is to use it and to feed it often. Now, if you want more on learning how to start and make your own sourdough starter, I have a free video series that you are gonna wanna get that walks you through all the aspects of why sourdough is so much healthier for us and our digestive system than using regular yeast and includes how to make it with fresh ground flour, regular all-purpose from the store, and even gluten-free and ancient grain einkorn with some of my favorite recipes. So it's a four-part free video series. I got the link here on the screen for you as well as in the video description below at melissaknorris.com forward slash learn sourdough. I like to keep my sourdough starter as I shared, especially when using fresh ground flour on the thicker side. So I don't let it become really runny. So it has a little bit higher ratio of flour than it does to water. My sincere hope is that more and more kitchens will return to these old traditional methods and old fashioned sourdough starters won't be considered old fashioned anymore, but the norm in every kitchen. So it's been cooling for 20 minutes and I always just like to take a, just a butter knife so it doesn't scratch my pan at all and just kind of loosen up, run it along the edges there between the bread and the pan before turning it out to let it finish cooling. With the cast iron retaining heat so well, that's why it's excellent for cooking and baking, but I only let it cool in the pan for about 20 minutes because there is that residual heat that's going to continue to cook it and can, can create a dry loaf if you leave it in too long. There's something extremely satisfying when you pull that loaf pan away and your bread comes out perfectly. That's something you just don't get when you buy things pre-made or from the store. And then for this to finish cooling, so it doesn't get all the lines up there on the top, I'm just kind of tip that there on its side. And then I'll let this cool fully before we try and slice it open. The best part of baking is definitely getting to eat it. <laughs> 